everybody to today's edition of SESI Talk. Uh, this is a series of interviews with uh, European um, key um, actors, key players, and it's the purpose is also lies in the fact that we would like to bring not only the negative sides but also the positive sides to of the European Union and its key players to the attention of our members and their affiliates. And today we have with us Jana Dom, a member of the European Parliament, a member of the Renew Europe Group. Uh, she's from Estonia and she's vice chair of the committee on petitions. Mrs. Dom, welcome. Yes, uh, nice to see you and thank you for inviting me. Uh, the European Parliament, we, we, we speak, uh, of course, social here, I'd like to start with social, has adopted uh, recently a resolution on the right to disconnect. What are the main, main findings of this resolution and do you share the view that's being stated in this resolution that the EU should adopt a directive in this regard? Uh, yes and no. We can adopt a directive, but we already have tools which are just not used in a proper way. We have a working time directive which states very clearly how many uh, hours are you allowed to work, how uh, how many hours are you supposed to rest, and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, during pandemic, the number of people who are teleworking has raised like enormously, and there is no proper ethics in place. Let's say. Uh, and these boundaries between uh, personal life and work have absolutely gone. And uh, this is a huge problem for women, especially, who are uh, kind of, you know, if you're at home, you're supposed to do everything at home plus work. So um, there is there is a mean to, to tackle this problem without a directive. But if we will fail, we have to go to the directive, yes. And uh, you have always... Chairwoman of the Committee on Petitions, um, what were the main COVID-19 related petitions which came up now in this past year? Uh -huh. oh, we got like more than 200 COVID related petitions and during several months since I think more than a year we dealt only with COVID related petitions. Uh, the main issues were Schengen zone, uh, all kind of cross-border issues, cross-border workers, these kind of things. Then it was transparency of uh, everything related to vaccines, prices, uh, all, all this, this kind of things. There was a huge problem with disabled people who felt that they are discriminated in this new reality of pandemics. And of course, there was a huge amount of petitions from uh, all kinds of passengers, especially from uh, aircraft passengers, you know, all these cancelled flights, no compensation, these kind of things. And the European Parliament adopted three resolutions based on these petitions. And the uh, European Commission, I have to say, uh, acted accordingly uh, in uh, everything related to Schengen Zone. They, they tried to kind of to harmonize this thing. So this was a year dedicated in Petty Commission Committee only to COVID-19, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that. And and you mentioned already the particular role uh, women have been playing now, the particularly, how could I say, additional burdens women ha had to carry during this um, pan pandemic. Um, we, we say the economic and social impacts of COVID-19 would particularly hit certain certain group and, uh, groups and type types of workers, young people, women, atypical workers, etc. What do you think, what, what, what is now very important in the coming months and years to try as much as possible, both at EU and at national levels, to protect or to ensure certain rights for these, um, how could I say, uh, very vulnerable uh, person, uh, groups of persons? Well, frankly speaking, we already have very good tools, but they are only on paper. We have European Pillar of Social Rights with wonderful 20 principles, uh, according all kind of non-discrimination uh, in labor market. But the problem is that we cannot implement it. Uh, for you know, uh, everything social goes under subsidiarity, which means that European Union uh, has no power to to put pressure on member states. Uh, yes, the European Commission for, like, I believe, 12 years or so is every year issuing so-called uh, content-specific recommendations on social issues. Uh, but uh, we see very clearly from the numbers that uh, member states are not implementing them or implementing them in, at, at very 
I would say, as unsatisfactory uh, way. And this is a problem, of course. So I, I very much hope that during this Conference of Future of Europe, we can discuss how to implement uh, all uh, wonderful things like uh, European Bill of Social Rights. Maybe we can do it without opening the treaties, for there is no con consensus about opening the treaties. But there is a lot of things which can be regulated in the frame of single market. And the, definitely social politics is one of them. Um, Ms. Tom, you also, uh, you're also coming from Estonia and you're a member of the delegation to the EU-Russia parliamentary cooperation. We just had... We just saw the summit and we just saw that there has been some, how would I say, some clearly different views on, on how, to, how to deal with, with Russia. Do you think um, that certain principles in the EU's relations with uh, Russia should be established? Is that realistic or are the interests of the member states um, too different um, that this, this is really something which can be done in the future? Uh, yes, you are right. I'm the member of this delegation since 2014, but I cannot call this delegation of parliamentary cooperation. I would say that this is delegation of non-cooperation. <laughs> you know, it's it's very sad. Yeah. I mean, really, uh, uh, it's very sad, and it's going on for like seven, seven more, more than seven years now. Uh, for it was like since 2014 when things get really worse, and they are still getting worse. But, you know, uh, uh, I believe that we have to speak to Russia. I really believe that. And I very much support this initiative of Macron and Merkel for, you know, especially Merkel, for she knows very well from the history of her own country what can happen to one country which is absolutely isolated and marginalized. This is what happened with Germany between two world wars. They know it from their own experience. And it's really stupid not to speak if there are common topics. And there are common topics, uh, like, uh, I don't know, climate, uh, terrorism, whatever. There are common topics. It doesn't mean that we have to, to forget Crimea or Ukraine or whatever. And uh, I really don't believe that this is very wise to let the United States to speak with Russia and to look at them. If we want to be kind of, you know, real power in the world, uh, we... Hmm. It's not very smart to be somebody settling, especially we know very well what happened in our relations with the United States when Mr. Trump was president. This particular president will not be that unfriendly to the European Union, but who knows what will happen in five years. Hmm. So I really believe that uh, we have to take a leading role there, and I really hope that uh, they will find consensus in the Council of the European Union. Uh, coming back to, to COVID-19 and the responses to it, and um, I read recently in an interview with um, the Estonian, uh, in the Financial Times, an interview with um, Kaya Kalas, the Estonian Prime Minister, and she was quite openly and bluntly um, accusing some governance, uh, governments of not giving their people freedoms back after, um, uh, despite uh, the, the falling of the COVID uh, infection rates. And um, my feeling was that she was a little bit also hitting, hinting at Finland, um, the restriction of which were very severe and severely hit Estonians. What do you think, generally speaking, of um, uh, this, this Finnish approach in, in or this Finnish politics in this very moment? Um, is, are these restrictive measures um, justified? Are they too, you mentioned the single market, the free movement, are, they, are some governments simply going over the top? Uh, you know, I cannot say if they were uh, justified or not. From our side, from the Estonian side, it was absolutely unclear. I mean, if you allow people to come, one, do you allow them to come only by aircraft? You know, we have these small aircraft, which are like, uh, I don't know, like big car with 50 person. And it, it, it doesn't solve the problem. But for us, it was kind of a wake up call. Well, frankly speaking, during the last 30 years, Every Estonian always thought that we have kind of specific relations with Finland. You know, we have only like three uh, countries from our from our uh, linguistic group in in uh, European Union. This is Hungary, Finland, and Estonia, and that it was always kind of sense of belonging. We don't have it anymore. So mm. this was the worst thing here. But if you come to Kaya Kala's interview, you know, all these interviews of prime ministers, they always have kind of internal dimension. So every time when they speak to foreign journalists, of course, they, they think, okay, 
they will quote it in Delphi. And uh, of course, he, she had to mention this, not not pointing at Finland, but it was it was definitely about Finland. And yes, it was a problem. It was absolutely unclear. Why did they act that way? Ms. Tom, to, to close, um, what do you think now as an MEP, what, what will be decisive for the good uh, development, the good survival, I would say, uh, of the EU, which are the issues to tackle and solve in the in, in the coming uh, two to five years, I would say. Uh, I really believe that this Conference of Future of Europe is a, a great idea, but I have huge concerns that it can turn into, you know, uh, public conferences which may... Uh, which may end by uh, with a campaign to next elections, and it will be huge disappointment for Europeans. Mm. For we really, we really need more solidarity, and I really believe that we need. Um, I would not say federal Europe or United States of Europe, but there are uh, things which cannot be solved uh, in this intergovernmental Europe, and we see it very clearly during pandemic. All these uh, vaccination things, all these medical issues all these conflicts on the borders, they cannot be solved uh, if we don't have more power in here in Brussels. But uh, I'm not very optimistic that we will find political consensus, but I believe that this is very, very important. Ms. Tom, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. All the best to you, uh, all the success needed and a good summer. Thank you. Thank you.